With permutations, you're going to find that the fundamental counting principle, the spaces, works for almost every word problem you need to solve. So the formula, the NPR formula, doesn't come up often in questions. You can use it in questions, but often the spaces works faster and better anyways. However, you still need to know your formulas because you might get algebraic equations like these in which you have to use the formula to solve. Part A is very typical. So for part A, this would come up on a non-calculator part of your exam. They would like to see an, usually it's worded solve for n algebraically, which means you can't use guess and check. Because guess and check, you should be able to look at that one and tell me the answer right away. If you have two spaces, NP2 stands for two spaces, what number would you start with so that you multiply them together, you get 56? Eight. Perfect. So you know the answer, but they're looking for an algebraic solution. An algebraic solution would say, you need to use your formula, and our formula here would have n factorial in your numerator and n minus 2 factorial in your denominator equals 56. Is this not a 2? Okay. And now we have to work with factorial notation and understanding how to simplify factorial notation. So one of the things that we can do is we can look at regular numbers. If I had 10 factorial over 8 factorial, the definition would say 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 on the top, and 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 on the bottom. Can you see that a lot of it would cancel out? And one of the things and one of the ideas that we use is if I wanted to simplify this without writing all the way down to 1, I start expanding the bigger one. 10 is obviously bigger than 8. And I go until I get to 8, but instead of expanding all the way down to 1, would you agree the top is equal to that? Because 8 factorial just means 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 all the way down to the 1. And I expand till I get to 8, because what can you do with 8 factorial on the top and 8 factorial on the bottom? They would simplify out, and you would just get 10 times 9, which is 90. Now, that's really easy to see with numbers, but we have to apply that idea to variables. What did we do with our numbers? We started expanding the bigger one. That's the key thing first. So now you have to look at your variables and tell me which number is bigger, n or n minus 2. It's going to be n, right? Because n minus 2 is going to be 2 smaller than n. So we start expanding the bigger one. It's going to be n. What number goes next? With 10, I'd put 9. n minus 1. What number goes next? n minus 2. And once I get to n minus 2, which is the number I have on the bottom, I stop and put an exclamation mark because I would have n minus 2 on the bottom as well. Equals 56. What's going to happen with our n minus 2 factorials? They're going to simplify. So our goal in expanding the bigger one is to simplify to get rid of the factorials. What does this change our equation if I multiply it out? On the left side, I have n squared minus n. On the right side, I have 56. Do you know how to solve that? Yes, you do. It's quadratic. We make one side equal to 0. and factor. It will be n minus 8 and n plus 7. So our possibilities are n equals 8 and n equals negative 7. Our definition of
factorials and permutations. NP2 means n objects taken two at a time. Can you have negative seven objects? Right? I went to the fridge to grab an apple and unfortunately there was negative seven left. No. You can't have negative objects. You can't have negative factorials. The negative seven cancels out leaving us only with n equals 8, which you already told me was the right answer. So when you get question A on an exam, it will say solve for n algebraically. They want to see your work with factorials, being able to simplify it. Okay? There are, however, some questions like B, B we're not going to solve algebraically. In B, we're going to use what we know about permutations. Permutations say this value is your number of spaces. This is the number you start with. We need it to equal 20. If we had one space, is it enough? No. If we had two spaces, is it enough? Yes. That's it. So R has to be 2. And there's no really nice way to do this one algebraically. Okay, questions for practice on this one are, is just question number 10.